Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. For the past 20 years, I've worked as a clinical pharmacist specialising in psychiatry. Mental ill health is the leading cause of chronic illness, and it represents up to 23% of all ill health in the UK. It's the largest single cause of disability. Mental health problems often affect people of working age, and they're really common. We've heard before in this chamber that one in every four of us will suffer a diagnosable condition. One of the reasons that I came into politics is because I witnessed on a daily basis the unfair effect the welfare system was having on the patients I was working with. Medication can really help some of these illnesses, but no medication can overcome the effect of poverty or isolation. I've seen firsthand the effect of the Westminster attitude to welfare. I've seen a patient with treatment-resistant schizophrenia wrongly declared fit to work and consequently losing her benefits. I watched her try to cope with the threat of homelessness and the stress of the appeal process. And I watched her illness deteriorate to the point that she needed to be admitted to hospital for several months. It's a barbaric way to treat our most vulnerable citizens. And, and let me tell you, it's expensive. Inpatient care in a psychiatric hospital costs nearly 3,000 pounds a week. That is truly a false economy. I have also worked with people who have attempted suicide because they lost all hope after losing their benefits. Any one of us here in this chamber would struggle to remain healthy if we felt we were the victim of blind economic forces beyond our control, or if we felt that we had no say in shaping or determining our destinies. Many people with mental health problems can work and want to work. We need to support them to work where they are able. However, the current welfare system does not do this. It's mistrusted, it causes anxiety, and it lacks sufficient flexibility to measure the impact of mental health conditions on a person's ability to sustain employment. This isn't just my opinion. There's now a substantial body of evidence which demonstrates that the welfare reforms introduced by the coalition government, let me say, in Westminster were not fit for purpose for people experiencing mental health problems. The Royal College of Psychiatrists, the Samaritans and Sam H, along with many others, have all raised concerns. The devolution of parts of the social security system provides an excellent opportunity for us to redefine the narrative around what we want the system to achieve. We have to be clear that it should be about empowering citizens, facilitating participation, and recognizing everyone's contribution and value to society. So what needs to change? The people undertaking assessments of an individual's ability to work have to have an adequate knowledge and understanding about mental health. We have to acknowledge that stress and anxiety are having an adverse effect on the mental health of those being assessed and reassessed and then reassessed again. Many people are being refused pay payments or are having their benefits cut or withdrawn only to have them re reinstated on appeal. We have to make the system work more effectively and we have to remove the fear factor. The patients that I worked with suffered a double stigma. Firstly, from having a mental health problem and secondly, from being on benefits. We need a system of social security that doesn't stigmatise people or punish people who receive benefits. The assessment of an individual's ability to work has to be based on the person's day-to-day -day abilities and not on an isolated instance. One of the main criticisms of the current system is the lack of sensitivity to illnesses which vary in severity from day to day or week to week. We have to recognise that for some individuals with chronic illnesses where there's much less chance of a significant sustained improvement or even an ability to live independently, repeat assessments are unnecessary. Let's look at the evidence, let's work with the service users and let's work with the professionals who work with them too to design much more effective policies and services. By working together, we can make sure we design a system which is better equipped to meet people's needs. 
The Scottish Government has a proven track record of taking action to protect the vulnerable through our commitment to universal services. Sorry, can I ask the member to wind up very quickly? Establishment of the Scottish Welfare Fund and ensuring no one in Scotland is impacted by the bedroom tax with dignity, fairness and no, respect. No, must stop the you centre. there. Sorry, we're very tight for times.